We are profoundly grateful for the life and witness of Ken Sparks and what he has meant to Carson Newman University and literally thousands of young men over the years here. No, it's not a sad day. It's a it's a celebration and it's a it's a, a day of joy. Uh, it, it's a day to honor uh, a life well lived, and uh, you can you can already hear God echoing "Well done." And uh, so, in that term, that's a celebration. What impact did Coach Sparks have? Oh my goodness, uh, Coach Sparks was assistant coach here when I, when I played at Carson Newman. Uh, was always on me about something. Uh, and then uh, brought, brought us here together as a coaching staff in 1980. And a guy that taught you, uh, I think, resiliency uh, as a man, but I think more important, Taught you how to be a man of reliance on the Lord. Uh, uh, a man that taught you how to give up yourself because there was a, uh, a greater good, much greater good. Uh, obviously, the influence of coaching uh, uh, with players and relationships in that way, but uh, the honor uh, was never about me or him or a certain player, the honor was always going to God because uh, he taught all of us what the real reason we were here and the real reason why we were coaching. And I think I know everybody on this staff is here because they feel like that's their mission. That's their ministry in their life. Uh, they're not here by accident. I didn't get here by accident and have a guy like Ken Sparks to be around. and uh, so. It's, that part has always been a blessing to me, and uh, I often told Carol uh, he was hard-headed and I was hard-headed, and so it was uh, sometimes too hard-headed, guys, but it, it always worked out great. Mike, does it feel a little different on campus today? I, I think so. I, I think you feel a – I think everybody is upbeat because they're grateful that Coach is not in any pain that uh, his destination is complete. Uh, but you uh, you have that sense of a loss. You know what I mean? You have that sense of a loss. Uh, even though he hasn't been here in, in a long time, uh, he just had more reflections today, I think, than maybe you had in the last couple of weeks or whatever. But there, there's, there, there, you know there's something missing, Mark, no doubt. For a football coach, it always seemed like wins and losses were secondary. What does it say about him that there was so much more to life than just what happened on the field? Well, he, he not only preached it, but he lived it. Uh, it was not a question at the end of the game about what a great job that we did. Uh, the biggest thing was about reminding people uh, to where you give the glory to. Uh, I, I think it speaks volumes in understanding that, you know, football is a vehicle uh, that drives us in a certain way. It drives young men we coach, it drives coaches, but it drives you toward a goal and an understanding of why you're really here. You know, uh, I, I, I feel fortunate because I know why I'm here. Uh, I, I think that part is a, is a very great part of it. I, Heard the other day a, a quote by Mark Twain. See, I do read books, Dr. O'Brien. Uh, said the two greatest days of his life was the day he was born and the day he figured out why he was born. And uh, to me, that was, that was Ken Sparks. 
man. You were just a little bit about what Ken meant to you. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we could we could really be here all day if I talked about everything that, that Coach Sparks meant to me. I, I'll never forget the first time actually meeting Coach Sparks is I was being recruited by Chuck King, and Chuck King called, and we talked a couple of times, and they come to my house to do a home visit. And before Chuck King called, I'd never heard of, of Carson Newman at all. And um, he and Coach Call come down. They visit with me and my mom and my football coaches in my home. And just that day, that the moment that he walked in my house, I knew that there was something different about Coach Sparks. I knew that there was something different uh, about Carson Newman. And we sat around, and we ate chicken wings, and we had a good time. And we talked a, a little bit about football, but we talked a whole lot about life. And, you know, I think that was probably – and then from there, we kind of transitioned – and to me coming on a visit here and you talk about the, the impact that Coach Parks has had on just people all over the world, probably the most impactful thing that's ever happened in my life was coming on a recruiting visit to Carson and, and getting the opportunity to, to meet Coach, but not just meet Coach, but meet the other players that were on our football team. And for me at that moment in time, it was the first time that I had gotten face-to-face -face with God and people of my own age. You know, it always been a parent or grandparent or someone older talking to me about the things that I need to do to make a difference in life. But just walking through the dorm and seeing every football player on this team had a Bible. And every football team player on this team didn't have a Bible, but they were actually actively engaged in using that Bible. And, you know, I stayed up that night with a guy named Johnny Smith. We stayed up to 3 o'clock in the morning. And we talked about, we talked about Christ. And I plan on coming up, taking a trip, partying, and having a good time. But I come on a recruiting visit and learned about Jesus, you know, with guys my own age. And, um, you know, you talk about what, what an impact. And I knew when I left campus that day that, you know, I wanted to be at Carson Newman because there was something special about Carson Newman and about Ken Sparks. And, you know, I went on a couple other visits. My buddy came with me, and we went on two visits. And we walked in, and we knew within five minutes we were in the wrong place. And we decided that, that we were going to come to Carson Newman. And I think the rest kind of speaks history to just coming in. And, you know, I was saved because of Ken Sparks and the things, that, the foundation that he set in this football program to where it was, it was all about Christ. It was all about, you know, preparing. And a lot of times in football, we, we look at, you know, you want to work, you want to prepare for the game. You've got to lift, you've got to run, you've got to be conditioned, you've got to be in great shape. But, you know, it takes a while. But once you're in this program for a while, you learn that, you know, what you're really preparing for is life. And probably more so than life, you know, what you're really preparing for is death. Because, you know, that's, that's going to be our final game. And that's what Coach Waits and I are talking today, man. I know Coach Sparks is, is rejoicing right now. I mean, he, he is exactly where he wants to be, you know. And you put as much time and effort and energy into working and living life that he has, then today's game day for him. I mean, he, he gets to go out and play the game. He gets to see the results of his work, man. And I'm ecstatic for him. I, I'm excited for Coach Sparks. Uh, Coach Sparks often pointed to you as a guy with a ton of heart, 225-pound uh, consensus All-American center. Uh, what's he meant to you and now the start of your burgeoning coaching career? Um, Coach Sparks... Uh, was a solid rock. Uh, he was going to be the same human being every single day, um, and he was going to say the exact same message every single day. Uh, there's a reason that if you go and talk to anybody who played football here, whether it was for one semester or uh, played for their uh, fifth season, uh, and you ask them anything about Coach Sparks, they're always going to say something about, how's your heart? And they may do this right here. Um, that's because for... You know, I've, I knew him for close to 10 years, and that was about it. But for close to 30 years, over 30 years, he did those, he probably did those exact same things. Uh, every group that came back and talked to us, that came for a reunion, the, the guys would be up front talking to the team, and they'd be doing this. And they would say things about, how's your heart? And, you know, they would just, it was just so funny how uh, time uh, didn't change who he was um, or what he stood for. Um, and I think... He, to me, he was a phenomenal example. And, I, and also, what I think is one of the more powerful things is, as I was standing just back there listening to Coach Turner answer questions and Coach Clowney answer questions, um, the day uh, 
that we won, that he, we, that he, we got the 300th win for him. That was the last game, or first game of my, that, that last season I played. And so, you know, I answer questions uh, here for media and different guys were answering questions and throughout different successes that we were able to accomplish uh, with Coach Sparks, I answered a lot of different questions for people. And what's funny is that so many of the questions I answered after wins and after major accomplishments for the football team are the exact same questions you're all asking right now about his life. Um, it's amazing how those questions, whether he, uh, w whether he had won a football game or now uh, that he's gone, his, the questions are the exact same. And I think that speaks volumes for who he was, what he was about. And in a world and a time where um, there's not a lot of it, he was truly an authentic person who believed so much in everything he said. And people can say anything they want, but he believed so much in us, all his players, his coaches, and he believed so much in everything he told us. Start with the similar thing, Dino. I mean, just put into words what Ken meant to you and your playing career and then as a coach. Um, <clears throat> coach Sparks, to me, uh, man, I could say a million things. Um, especially having the opportunity to play and coach with him. Uh, just was a, a perfect example for me. It's the best word I could put into a to place. Um, I have a lot of people that I look up to, and hands down, Coach Sparks was probably the most consistent, you know, from, sit, from having on football pads, listening to him talk, to putting on a polo shirt, or putting a whistle around my neck, to you know, watching him in individual meetings, watch him handle coaches, watch him talk to people in church, watch him talk to people in the community, just watch him live a life from a player perspective and a coaching perspective. As it was just, it was the same person. And if you, if you know what coach was about, and, uh, and the reason why he always talked about the same stuff is because he was a man of truth. He was about the word. He was about our Lord and Savior, and he. His example was that everywhere he was and everything he did. And, uh, and for me, that was perfect for me to see that, to see a, a consistent person speak it and then live it, you know, in front of people, behind people. Um, and uh, it was great. So he was a perfect example for me, um, a great example of what, what it looked like to be a man of God on this earth. And not just a man of God, but a coach uh, looking to impact kids. I think our coaches and student athletes have expressed it well. Uh, this is obviously a day of, of uh, joy and celebration for us on one hand, that uh, a guy that we love and admire so much is no longer suffering, but uh, he is with his Lord that he has longed to be with for some time. So we're glad in that sense. However, as we know, grief is always associated with loss and we're only human, and we, um, we uh, uh, feel a sense of loss. Uh, how can you lose someone that you love and admire as much as Ken Sparks and not feel a sense of loss? So we have mixed emotions here, but we are profoundly grateful for the life and witness of Ken Sparks and what he has meant to Carson Newman University and literally thousands of young men over the years here. The University of Tennessee lost Pat Summit. Pat Summit was UT. Ken Sparks was Carson Newman. Um, for you as president to have someone who is a patriarch essentially of this university, it's very rare, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, it's, people like Pat Summit, Ken Sparks, come along once in a lifetime. A General Neyland at UT. Uh, maybe a Dana X Bible here. We've had other great ones. Dow Sheely was a great coach. But don't you think this speaks volumes of Ken Sparks? That here we've got the fifth winningest college football coach in the history of the game with 338 victories. You've got to win 10 games a year and repeat it 30 years to even get to 300. And only 10 coaches in the history of the game have ever done that. And here's a man that's won 338, the fifth winningest in the history of the game, 23 conference championships, five national championships, and I'm the first one that said that. We're just not talking about football. 
What does that say about Ken Sparks? Ken Sparks was a great man of God. And you know, one of my best memories, one of my favorite memories is, uh, as is, has been referenced here, is when Carson Newman under Coach Sparks won our 300th football victory. And many of you were there, perhaps all of you were, and at the end of the game, when Coach Sparks had all the players at midfield, uh, right there on that eagle, had them all down there kneeling, and, and players from all over were here thinking this might be the day that Coach Sparks becomes number 10 in winning 300 football games. So he had players in the stands, former players, admirers, people from everywhere. And Coach Sparks, building that team, all of us together, called everybody down around there, and there he was at midfield in a state of exuberance. All of us were excited. The athletic director, Mr. Morgan, had a huge banner made and 300 rolled down from the uh, athletic complex. And the next day, I saw a, a picture, a photograph in a paper that will go unnamed, but Coach Sparks was in the middle of everyone, and he had that finger lifted up like this. Some of you remember that? And the caption under the photo in the paper says, uh, Carson Newman football coach Ken Sparks wins number 300th victory and he's raising his finger saying we're number one. Those of you there know what he was saying, right? He was holding that finger up and he was saying this little light of mine I'm going to let it shine and he had all the football players and all the former players and all of us. I was singing too. This little light of mine I'm going to let it shine. And you know what's impressed me? I've been impressed with Ken Sparks a long time, but I'm impressed that this press conference, everybody here has talked about the man, the character, and who he was in living and calling us to live and play like champions. That's impressive, isn't it? It's impressive. Well, thank you all so much again for being here, and I think most uh, everything has been said um, about Ken that could be said. But this morning early when I got to the office and heard of Ken's passing, these words came to my mind that I'll bet you this morning at about 1.30 a.m., Ken looked up and said, Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me even though I made all these mistakes, even though my, I erred. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Today is Ken Sparks' greatest victory. We've, everybody knows he's a legendary coach. But he's obtained the biggest victory that any of us could ever obtain today. And I thought, you know, if Ken were here, what would he want to say or what would he say? And I think it's been said, Kevin and Coach uh, Turner and Dr. O'Brien, uh, he'd walk up and say, how are you doing? And we'd say, fine. How are you, Coach? And he'd say, I'm fine. And his next words, he'd pat us on the chest, right about our heart, and say, how's your heart? And he wasn't talking, I don't think, about our physical health. I think Coach Sparks was talking about, how's our relationship with Christ? How's, Alan, how's your relationship with Christ today? And that's what he'd be saying to everyone, I suspect, if he could walk into to this room. And the legacy that he leaves, even though his legacy in football speaks for itself, is much deeper, much greater, and will run much further and longer than the number of victories he had. And I'm so pleased that our coaches today have, and players have had the opportunity to know Coach because that same legacy will live on through our football program. What an impact the man's had. And then I thought, well, how would he leave us today? And I think it would be something like this. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. When peace like a river flows, and when it comes my way, when we have peace, or when sorrow 
like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot in life happens to be, he has taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. Alan, how's your heart? I think that would be what he'd ask me today. 